The Corsair Carbide Air 540 High Airflow Cube Case is great for air cooling or liquid cooling. Check the link in the video description to learn more. I would make the argument that the Rampage 4 Gene is still the most extreme grade motherboard for an MATX system, that is micro ATX. It uses LGA 2011, which at the time of filming this, only supports up to second gen Intel Core Series processors, so that's Sandy Bridge. However, Ivy Bridge is coming soon, meaning you'll be able to slap a six core extreme edition or non-extreme edition Ivy Bridge, so that's third generation Core Series processor onto this, as well as up to 32 gigabytes of memory, up to two dual slot graphics cards in SLI or Crossfire, as well as pretty much anything else you would want to put on it. This is an extremely powerful little motherboard, and the emphasis, of course, being on the fact that it is little. It's MATX. I mean, look at that. The socket takes up like most of the motherboard. So anyway, let's go through the accessories. First of all, there's Do Not Disturb, I Am Gaming, Go Away, Republic of Gamers door hanger. Awesome, love it. There's the ROG Connect cable. So this allows you to tweak BIOS options at a hardware level using a secondary machine, such as a notebook, by plugging into the ROG Connect enabled USB port on the back of the board. We've got six SATA cables. So three of them are right angle and three of them are straight. These are validated for SATA 2 or SATA 3 speed operation. Their Q connector feature, which I feel is for lazy people or people with very, very fat fingers, can be handy for that, plugging in your front panel connectors. A Republic of Gamers SLI bridge that is optimized for the short distance in between the two PCI Express 16X slots. And yes, those, my friends, are full PCI Express 16X slots because this is LGA 2011. And for anyone who thinks that LGA 1150 is getting more than four DIMM slots or more than PCIe 8X by 8X SLI or Crossfire support anytime soon, no, 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 no. Not without things like sort of weird bridge chips and kludgy solutions like that. Next up, we've got an IO shield, like padding on the back, which is kind of cool. A user guide the ROG Connect guide, the SATA HCI RAID mode notice, as well as an enormous sticker that I personally wouldn't put anywhere near my computer, but if you really wanna have a huge ROG logo on your uh, system, hi JJ. Nah, just bugging. Um, anyway, that's up, that's up to you, that's up to you. Why don't we just leave it at that? All right, so features. Other than the fact that ASUS reserves the very best quality components for their Republic of Gamers class of products, what do you actually get for spending so much on a motherboard that inherently doesn't do that much more than another motherboard? Well, for one thing, especially when you're trying to build a smaller class of system, using very high quality components in the voltage regulation modules is incredibly important. So ASUS is using 10K black caps that are rated for 105 degrees Celsius operation. So that means that in a cramped case, no matter what sort of bad stuff is going on with the system, you are not going to be in a situation where it's going to be running out of spec and it's not going to last for very long. So that is not what this is about. You've also got a nice little heat pipe that connects all of the various uh, voltage regulation module components that are above the socket as well as beside the socket. Using higher quality components also reduces things like coil whine. So for example, when you hear that noise when you're under load, that can be attributed to lower quality components. All right, so what else do you get? You get a better audio solution, generally speaking, on an ASUS ROG board than you get almost anywhere else. Right here is their Redline audio concept, so you can actually see that instead of including, like they did with Supreme FX2, a separate PCB riser card that goes into one of your PCI Express slots, they have a little illuminated red line that separates the sound card PCB on the motherboard from the rest of the PCB. There's an aluminum shield as well as the fact that the sound processor is as far away from the other components as possible to reduce interference and that right there is a 1500 microfarad like massive capacitor in addition to the audio grade capacitors elsewhere that compensates for a couple of things. So if you have like a sudden explosion or something like that and it's drawing more power than normal, you might with a normal audio solution see something like a clipping or, or it, because it's not able to deliver enough power, this is designed to smooth out those things. So better audio solutions are something that I personally do feel are 
help justify a more expensive board, even though you could buy a less expensive board and a dedicated card, but of course ASUS has Zonar cards for that. You also get better PCB design, so you've got your PCI Express 8-pin connector still in its ideal top location, as well as the 24-pin connector in its ideal right-hand location. This is more difficult, and it does take adding more layers to the PCB in order to maintain an optimal layout and still have it fit in a smaller form factor. Now I did mention this is a bit of an older board so the SATA ports uh, feel a little bit dated at this point but you've got four SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports, two running off the Intel chipset, two running off a third-party Asmedia chipset and then two SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports. I probably should have mentioned that the CPU is entirely digitally powered so all the VRM is fully digi, I think they call it, what is it? Digi plus two, so that means you have all the tweakability that you could possibly want. That's another thing that you get with ROG boards that you don't get with other boards. Is that gonna help you overclock better? Unless your name is Andre Yang, possibly no. But if you wanna feel better, having all the bells and whistles, there's the way to do it. Actually, there's another SATA, three, or SATA 2, three gigabit per second connector down here. And that's, uh, yeah, SATA 3G. And then we've got our front panel connectors, two front USB 2, as well as onboard start, reset, and the go button switches. You can actually, uh, there's the, okay, your front audio connector. And then that leads us to the PCI Express slot. So dual PCIe 16X. This guy right here is wired only for 8X, and this one is right, wired for 4X. So you could fill this up with a full complement of graphics cards and other expansion cards, and you would get very, very satisfactory performance indeed. It supports up to DDR3 2400 megahertz. However, you will have to overclock in order to achieve that. And moving along to the rear I.O., we've got eight USB 2.0 ports. Again, this is a bit of an older board. Two USB 3.0 ports, a clear CMOS button, the ROG Connect button, as well as BIOS flashback functionality is built into this board. So if you do brick the board, the power goes out in the middle of a BIOS flash, you can restore it simply by following the instructions on the ASUS website. Optical digital audio out, a PS2 port, an Intel NIC, so you can use that to prioritize game packets um, using the AI Suite software, and then 7.1 audio out, as well as an eSATA port. You, it includes a copy of Demon Tool Standards, as well as Kaspersky Antivirus, and something that I'm sure JJ is watching this video, and I'm sure was ready to write me an email telling me I had forgotten about, I have not. Supreme FX3, in spite of the fact that I've mentioned and several times now, this is an older board, is still getting updated. So their new uh, sound radar, or whatever they call it, basically it's a visual indicator on your screen that actually points out where sounds are coming from in-game, in real time. It's basically cheating as far as I can tell, but hey, every advantage, right? Um, has been added to Supreme Effects 3 boards, even older ones like this one. So you pair this up with an Ivy Bridge E processor and a couple of GTX Titans, and you have one powerhouse of a system in a very small form factor. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and overview of the Maximus 4 Gene. Did I say Maximus because I meant Rampage 4 Gene? Sorry, JJ. From ASUS, don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Don't forget to like the video if you liked the video or dislike it if you don't, I don't care. And leave a comment under the video letting me know why you liked or disliked it. I'll read it, but you know, no promises I'll change anything, but I might.